Hello and welcome to Season 3, Episode 24 of Fabrically Speaking Live. <laughs> I am so grateful to have all of you here with me today on this Thursday, on this very hot Thursday in Arizona. We're close to 100 degrees. What temperature is it where you're at and where are you watching from if you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Claire Rowley, and I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing products. And today I'm going to dive into fiber art, the topic of fiber art. If you're not familiar with what fiber art is, or if you're confused as to the actual definition of fiber art, stick around because I'm going to show you and help you understand how many different variations there are to the term fiber art. And maybe you'll feel a little bit more relaxed about diving in and having some fun with it. Hello, everybody. Hello. Let's start at the top. If I can get to the top. <laughs> Hello, Tina, Wendy, Linda, Brenda, also known as Brandy. Got bamboo batting floating around. Madeline. And boy, let's see, the chat's gone fast. <laughs> You're all over the century mark. Oh my goodness. If I didn't say your name, it's just because I can't read that fast that far away. And welcome to today's live or fabrically speaking live. And know that if you are watching this, you're watching it live on June 9th of 2022. So if it's not that date, then you're watching it on the replay. If you type into the chat, then uh, and and you get a reaction right away, you know you're part of the live. And if you missed and came in afterward, well, maybe you didn't subscribe to my channel. Be sure to do that now so that you don't miss out on any live episodes of Fabrically Speaking Live and anything else that I decide to do. <laughs> it's bamboo batting day. 66 degrees oh, in Portland. How nice. Okay, everybody. Hello, Tamara. Tamara is the one that, or was it Tamara? <sighs> you told me in an email how to say your name. Okay, so I also like to announce we have some new products on the site. I keep using these and feeling bad because I haven't really offered them yet, but we do have them now. These are the Kai shears and this is the perfect size for my hand for all four th fingers to go in and I don't get stuck you know with the it doesn't get stuck on my hand and have to pull it off so these are now available under the supplies list as well uh oh I got music playing where's that music shouldn't be showing this on. Top. There we go. Oh, I know why that happened. Well, hopefully you didn't mind the music. I was a little worried about you sewing in trifocals, Allison. I'm glad that you're back. <laughs> I think that the music's gone now. Yeah. I, I, that took that long for me to know. So these are the Perfect Scissors by K, uh, Karen K. Buckley. And we the purple ones are on their way. So the purple ones are s significantly larger than these. These are similar to the variations offered by the Appliquick scissors that you see me use often. So these would be the equivalent to the Appliquick thread snips. And these are a bit more affordable than the Appliquick scissors. So if you've been dying to get a serrated set of scissors, now you can get them at a more affordable rate under the Karen K. Buckley version. These are the prize giveaway, some of them. I will be adding a couple more of yarns like you see here. In order to win giveaway you have to be here at the end of the show and you have to pay attention during the show in order to have any chance of winning because you have to know the answer to the question that I ask at the end of the show 
And, you know, you'll get faster at typing if you type more during the show. So be active in the chat so your fingers are all warmed up and ready to type that answer. And as soon as I'm ready to spring it on you, all of a sudden, by surprise, I will do that. So fiber art is really subjective. It, it depends on what it is that you are intending to make using a fiber art technique. The number one thing required for fiber art is some type of fiber. You don't even have to have it be actual fabric like this one. This is what I'm going to use today. <laughs> it's so tickly. Kind of like I did on this. And this is the image that you saw when you clicked to watch today. You can see that I used a variety of different trims on it. And I also did some free motion stitching using the Octi Hoops. But this, this, well, this can also be considered fiber art and that's a purse made from fiber done in an artistic way using decorative stitches and Piecing. This is one of my Fabrically Speaking Live episodes. Be sure to look for that from last summer. This is another version of the fiber art. So you can see you can start your fiber art journey out with just a little piece of fabric. And this is just two layers of a fabric fused together with our Fuse and Fuse stabilizer to give it body so that you can stitch on it and it will last for, I don't know, pretty long time. Here's another version of a fiber art bag and this is quilted, just quilted and, and quilting can become art because well it, it's really pretty when you get it stitched out. And then you go into things like this. This is also a fiber art and this is one of my Claire Rowley's creative notions and there is a free pattern for this. So if you want to learn how to do blanket stitch applique, quilting, binding, and beaded fringe, be sure to check out my Creative Notions playlist inside of my YouTube channel. These, or this is also another form of fiber art, depending on where you display it. This is just a quilt, kind of a, a placemat size, but all of the quilting that you do is like drawing or, or art form on the fabric. And this is another form of fiber art where I, I did this on my <coughs> fabrically, speaking, fabrically speaking, excuse me, I have to clear my throat, hold on. <coughs> Oops, I unmuted and said unmuted so you guys heard me. <laughs> okay, so this was just yarn that I stitched out using the and the Octi hoops and putting extra handles in all of the holes to build a, a section of yarn that I could then stitch on to create into a fiber art shape that I can now turn into a larger body of by connecting different fabrics together or applying more yarns and create it into a another version of fiber art. Carol Ann Waugh from Stupendous Stitching, or she's the author of Stupendous Stitching. This is a book we offer at creativefeet.com because she uses my pearls and piping foot to, to do the lessons inside of her book. And if you buy the book from Creative Feet, you will get an autographed copy. Man, my tongue isn't working. You'll get an autographed copy of her book. Then we jump into this type of fiber art where we ink or paint on the fabric and then stitch over it. And you can use this to be a wall hanging, a pillow. And it, in, it is obviously a work of art as well as the koi fish design. And if you are in the school, the Babbling Brook course I just announced that we have a new season of that. So if you're interested in learning the fiber art process, it's over 110 hours of video for the Babbling Brook course. And if you're not sure what I'm speaking about, 
my eye. Something's in my eye. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, the book is really helpful. Get you going. Get you inspired. Keep you inspired. Hello, Mary. Hello, Lorinda. Amy. Welcome, Amy. Robin. Hi, Robin and Sheila. So nice to see all your faces. Thank you for joining and having your face in the icon. It really does warm my heart to see your faces, especially when I used to see you at shows. It's, uh, it's like you're here with me around my table. I'm going to show you now my desktop and help you to see where to go. So if you go to create and at the top of the chat and in the description of the video is the link to go to my free online show. And you'll see it's opening up to, oh, we don't want it to be here because that might slow it down. This was, wow, what we're doing right now. No, that was last week's free motion fun. So inside of the Create with Claire Rowley, you'll see down here we have Creator Courses. And if you click on the Creator Course, I did email invitations to all of you that are already members in the school. So all you have to do is click on the invitation to go into the course. And I'm updating, I started updating the Babbling Brick as of this morning. So I'm going to make it more interesting and actually have it be like a little season show or episode for you and other things are on the way be sure to subscribe to your notification so that you're notified by clicking on the bell and pulling down or i'm sorry clicking on your the your face or the circle that represents you if you didn't get a chance to put a photo of you in there yet and then go down to your, your personal settings and inside your personal settings, turn on the notifications so that you don't miss out on anything. Notifications are right in here. There is a mobile app as well for this. So when you go into notifications, if you haven't signed up for the mobile app yet, I believe the link to it is down at the bottom. You enter your phone number and it sends you the what am I trying to say? The app. But the app is the Mighty Networks. And inside of the Mighty Networks is Create with Claire Rowley. It would be so cool to have you guys in there with me. And I'm going to work on the, the babbling brick a little bit with you because some of the inks that I used and that aren't available anymore. So I'm going to show you how to adapt to the, to the new options that we have to substitute for some of the colors that were not in it. And uh, so if you guys have any questions as I do this, I'm, I'm going to be using the sequins and ribbon foot for part of this. When you work on fiber art, you have to think of it in layers. The bottom layer is the stuff you want to do that where free motion where you swing around and and because you don't want to have to worry about running into a bead and breaking your sewing machine needle. So the first part of this I will be doing with the Octi Hoops. I'm not going to do a whole project today because there's just simply not enough time for that. Yeah, you guys can do the inking. I had a whole group and everybody was able to succeed in it. And this is a VIP group video that will be coming out soon. And I'm, I'm going to be dropping a, a pattern for those of you in the VIP group very soon. So what you see here is a variety of different types of trims that you can sew with the sequins and ribbon foot. You can try doing it without our foot. Though I did design it because sequins came out and nobody could sew them on by a machine. The sequins and ribbon foot has a quarter inch size tube shape to it that allows you to sew all your quarter inch trims when you purchase it. 
And then we have the accessory guide set, which are two different accessories that you put on in place of the guide that's on the foot. And then you can sew wider or narrower trims. There's been a trend of people buying the satin edge foot and the accessory guides thinking that they can skip the sequins and ribbon foot, but you're missing out on the most popular size guide, the quarter inch guide, if you do that. And the bottom of the satin edge and sequins and ribbon foot are significantly different. I'll show you on a close up here. I'd hate for you to think you're all ready to do something only to be disappointed because you're not using the correct foot for the guide. So when you open our packages, they come with adapters and an instruction booklet inside. And the satin edge foot is designed for doing seam allowances, binding, top stitching, edge stitching, pin tucking, invisible applique, applique. This is a foot that helps you sew straight using any particular pattern, zigzag straight, blind hem, blanket stitch, whatever you stitch you wanna sew, that little wire inside there guides for you. But the bottom of the foot you can see has this really deep channel. It is completely different than the anatomy of the sequence and ribbon foot. And I designed the sequence and ribbon foot specifically to make it so you can sew around in circles using things like sequins and not strike or not have the foot <clears throat> excuse me not have the foot catch so as you go up on a sequin see how the satin edge does not want to go up over the sequin but the sequins and ribbon foot just glides right over it and doesn't affect those sequins that's one of the most important features of this foot and because of the design of the bottom of the sequins and ribbon foot it also makes it so you can sew elastic without having to stretch from behind the foot so this is a multi-function presser foot and absolutely it's so much fun, especially if you have yarns and maybe maybe you used to knit and now you have all these yarns and you don't use them anymore. I know. I know. There's a lot of you out there that can knit <laughs> and you know that I'm not the knitter in the group. So let me set this aside. I found all those quilt squares that I had set aside from last week if you were wondering if if you were wondering probably not and I've created a, a like a really nice little bed for Tinkerbell over in the corner but she hasn't even joined in today I'm going to keep this handy so that I can refer to it are you guys being sarcastic today yet You've had, you've had the feet since 2007. You know, that's not that long. Unless you haven't used them and you've had them since 2007. When I released the creative feet, I was, well, first of all, when I invented my first foot, I was 19 years old. And since I am 59, oh my gosh, this is so long ago. I still feel like I'm, you know, young. The body doesn't. But I released them to the world in 1989. That was my first appearance to the world market. This, this bamboo batting, it's really hard to spread your fabric out initially because it is, it has so much static cling. And this is when I kick it into the air. <laughs> if I didn't have all this there. So basically it's a fantastic feature of the bamboo once you get your fabric on there, it's not going to move. It eliminates a lot of the shifting of the material. And you don't need to bother with spray adhesives. This little wrinkle here does not want to come out. I am young, I am young, I am young. <laughs> There we go. I'm going to cut this off. You can make it whatever size you want. But if you're going to quilt using the octi hoops, 
you want to make sure that when you're learning that you don't select a piece of fabric that's too small as you move the octahoops around on the quilt. If you haven't seen these before, these are free motion frames that let you do machine embroidery, monogramming, applique, and also use for free motion quilting. You do receive three hoops in the kit. I thought this fabric would, the camera would like this fabric, and it does, doesn't it? Hi, Judy. You bought them at a fabric fair, fair, one of the shows that we used to do. See how nicely these blend together? Okay, I'm going to set these aside for now. You can also use ribbons in all, all sizes of ribbons from 16th inch to 3 eighths of an inch with the foot. And if you want to go bigger on your ribbon, you can use the satin edge foot and use our top stitching technique. For those of you who are using my hypnosis sleep meditation video at night, and you're using it to help you sleep and also to convince yourself that you can be more creative and realize that I had you envision your creative ball of light in your hands and then I have you have it go into your hands and then I have it go into the top of your head. Take the ball in your mind's eye and have it be above your head and then when it dissolves into your hands then it just flows into your head. That'll help you not get stuck on that. And as you're trying to convince yourself that you can do something, realize that you are not your body. You are the creative person. You're the spirit and you're using this body, but the spirit can do whatever you want. So you're not lying if you say that you're capable of doing something and then your brain accepts it as truth and you can move quicker through the creative process. Do I sound a little corny right now you guys or are you up on the creativity or the meditation do you guys meditate if you do go ahead and hit the like button I'm going to take this and fold it in half because I'm going to use I'm going to make this my fiber art top and bottom and now I'm just going to slide it underneath here and I do want to select a thread that looks good on the back side. That's how I did this one. I just went and just at a show and I just went. Actually, I think I made this on at my gallery when I owned a gallery in Prescott, Arizona. And I was just playing in the in the gallery when people were walking and they were watching. So this is just this same fabric here that I used to make one of my elbow bolster pillows so you don't hurt yourself when doing free motion and then I need to select what what thread I want to use for the doodle part and I figured I would make all of you happy and use purple since I know how much you like purple oops wrong camera here we go this is the luscious purple color that I'm going to use. And I'm using the Invisifil because I want it to drop down below the trims and the yarn that I'm going to place on top of this. And over the light colors, it's going to really show up well. So when, when I go to do decorative stitching, I can use this as well. But I could also switch and incorporate a variety of different colors. And I can do some of the stitching in this and some of the stitching on this on top for the free motion giving it a little bit more variety and height so why not i probably will one being a 40 weight and this is 100 weight this is the invisifil 100 weight 100 percent polyester thread now to make it simpler and to make it so i actually like what the bottom looks like i'm going to choose a complementary bobbin thread that i wouldn't mind seeing on the back even if no one's ever going to see the back 
and this is the wonderful Deco Bob pre wound bobbins. This, this bobbin that I was using before, even though I've already used it, it looks as if I have not. This is 80 weight thread, so it lasts a long time. Put it back in its spot. And now I'm going to choose a, I'll go with a lavender. And that will be my bobbin color. And even though it is not the same weight, it works beautifully. I haven't had, in fact, even if you were to use our jean stitch thread, which is super thick on top, it still, it still doesn't have any problem using the Deco Bob bobbin. I knew, I knew you'd all like the purple. <laughs> purple, look at you guys. You're so predictable. I thought this fabric was a good bargain or a good balance for making me happy with my teal and you happy with the purple. The needle that I'm going to use is a 9014 and I'm using one of the super universal needles because it is more forgiving and we're going to do some difficult things for a sewing machine needle. When you sew through something bulky like this, it, it makes the needle have a more challenging time going through that, then through the fabric, through two layers of fabric, two layers of batting. That's a lot for a needle to go through. So the 9014 is going to be less likely to have skipped stitches and loop stitches. Have you ever had your thread shred above the eye of the needle and you just went, why does that happen? You're the teal girl, Brenda, Brandy. Hello, Wendy. Welcome. If I already said welcome, you know, I'm embarrassed. Not really. <laughs> it takes a lot to embarrass me now after all of these shows and 40 years of being in front of you guys demonstrating. Yep, 40 years. It went by so fast. I tell you, you can tell young young people that your life's going to go by really fast and and they don't they don't believe you. Cuz I remember being told that when I was younger and I think I would have ran even faster through my life if I knew how fast 40 years would go. What did you forget? And it's all right. <laughs> I have the foot on the machine right now, meaning the darning foot, also known as a free motion foot. I'm gonna be able to square this off at some point, so I'm not really worried if I don't have it all in the right position. Oh, by the way, on the VIP, I was asked about making a crossover purse. So we could play around with the bridal purse pattern that I created for inside of the creative notions as you know something like this but you know all of you get to decide what I do on the next whatever you want Claire to sew day inside the VIP group which is coming up on a Tuesday at two o'clock at the th it's the third Tuesday of this month now to me when I go and I see yarn I don't see yarn for knitting. I see yarn for stitching down onto fabric and maybe pretending to knit because we can pretend to knit as well. So if you want to know which color this thread is, it's number 708 in the Invisifil line. And that label will no doubt pop off at some point like this one has so before I go to use it I always look inside to make sure I've written it down if I have not I go okay it's invisible thread which is the IF and it's 708 and it is just a luscious true purple that I would say is purple purple One 
of the nice things about Invisifil is it's really thin. It's so small that you're not going to see it very well when you stitch it, which sounds like not a good idea. However, you can you'll you'll be less likely to notice a big stitch you accidentally stitch out. Now I know that I can show you a little bit with the foot, but I am going to remove it in a minute because I don't need it. And just so, because some people wonder how we use the Octi Hoops. Uh-oh, my, my button thing turned off. You cannot turn off my button switcher. Why did you turn off? The feed is still going, right? What's going on here? Lots of little things happened in that moment. Oh, yay. Shoo. Okay. All right. I'm going to slide my Caterpillar Light tablet down a little bit, which slides all my goodies down. And we have... I need someone to sit here and fan me with one of those old-fashioned fans. <laughs> I have an air conditioner in here, and I turned it on until I went live. It's too loud to run it while being live with you. Here we go. Oh, by the way, I accidentally made one of these in... I've been wanting to have one of these. This is the Tropic Jungle. Look at that. It matches it matches today's project so nicely. This is the Tropic Jungle, and I, I accidentally made it. And I was like, I didn't have an order for it. It must have been because I wanted one. And this is one that I will not have on the site. This is the Tequila Sunrise, and I burnt the wood when I cooked it. So sometimes you guys like my out my mistakes better than what we offer on the site so if you're interested in this you email me and let me know and and you can buy this because it's uh, not something that will ever be sold as the tequila sunrise is normally much brighter i don't know i had i thought i had one in here yeah just to show you the comparison if i if i could be sure to duplicate look at the difference in those two if you don't know what these are, these are pressers. They eliminate finger pressing. It's much healthier for you. And you can use it either right-handed or left-handed. And there's two angles to each one of the pressers. It allows you to put your hand down while you finger press. And your finger falls into this groove. There's no sharp edges to hurt your fingers on any side. So I brought it up because they were in my way. So we have these little handles and they drop into the frames, allowing you to actually write with your hand down, fabric in the hoop, and then you just put your hand on the, on the little crayon and you can write your name. You could write poetry on someone's quilt or, you know, anything that you want, including quilting to get the fabric to move with the hoop because if you just like all other free motion hoops they have they have you push down against the hoop and and then move and what that does is it causes the back fabric to get pinched on the surface of the sewing machine so what we do with the octi hoops is you have as mentioned before three frames to choose from and the one that you choose to have on top is based on the size of your hand so this would be too big for my hand as the top frame. And you can use this with that and move this along within the inside of the frame should you want to, but I find it much easier to utilize the two smaller frames. That does not limit the size of your quilt or the size of the frame is not limited by the size of your quilt. Your quilt is not limited by the size of the frames. <laughs> I don't know if I said it right. 
the first time. Okay, so then what you do to use these when quilting is you're going to place the larger of the two frames underneath the, the quilt, and then you can't see it. Oh no, isn't that a scary thought? <laughs> if you can't see the frame, you could hit it with your needle. So this, the smaller frame drops in within the perimeter of the one beneath it. So there's no risk of you hitting the bottom frame because it is outside of the perimeter of this frame here. And then you have your handle in the top frame, bring the two corners together and now the whole quilt moves and you can, any direction you move the quilt, the quilt is locked in place and it's not distorted or stretched out of shape like it is if you push down and then try to move and so now I'm ready to put it up on the sewing machine. Yeah, that's a, it's actually an oven burned tequila sunrise. Sunburned is cute. You will be able to do it if you keep on trying. You will be able to write on your quilt, Brenda. You just got to keep on trying. It was Brenda, right? You guys, I can't read it. That one's too close. That one's too far. <laughs> Are you all having a nice Thursday? All right. So now I'm going to take and slide that frame beneath. And then now you can see that it's under there and I've slid it and I take this smaller frame and I'll do a little bit with the foot and then I'm going to take it off because it's not necessary and it's going to be in my way. I don't really know what I'm going to do until I decide what I'm going to do. Unlike embroidery machines that do all the thinking for you, you have freedom to do whatever you want. And on this quilt, I randomly did different designs, planning to run the length of the fabric with beads and yarns and cordings. So I, I think I'll follow the same kind of idea, maybe. We'll see. I can do whatever I want, just as you can. This can be my the bottom, the lower portion of my quilt or the top. And I could envision this as a flower, couldn't I? Doesn't that kind of look like a flower? Here's the edge of my batting, so I want to take it in. I'm going to be using two elbow pads because I had lost my right one and it was, I was starting to get a backache after sewing. This is what they're used for. Because we don't push down against the frame, we don't have our elbows raised. So when your elbows are resting on the table, well, the table is not soft and it can, it can injure you, especially if you end up quilting for a few hours because you're not physically sore anywhere so why not keep going right you want to make sure you get up periodically set an alarm so that you don't keep quilting hours and hours because well it's not good for you you want to make sure that you move your legs get up maybe walk around your sewing table a few times if that's possible and or go outside for a minute and smell the flowers and then come back in so now I have my other elbow pad over here for my right elbow, or maybe I should switch them this time. Oh, that works better. There you go. And I have a smaller one because I tested it out for my son. He uses it for his mouse. It stopped him from having discomfort in using a traditional mouse. If you have any problems with corporal tunnel issues, this is a great little support to protect you from re-injuring yourself ever. And this is a free pattern inside the school. And also there's a video in Fabrically Speaking Live playlist showing you how to make it. So no excuse to hurt yourself now. Elbows down, 
shoulders relaxed, and then you start sewing with your hand resting on the bottom frame that you can feel through the quilt. And then you put your fingers on the handle and start to draw. If you need glasses, you should wear them. And I do. Needle thread is the one that you need to worry about, not the bobbin thread. No matter how old your machine is, where's that thread? It's so hard to see it so thin. I'm making sure the thread is in the tension. And we're using just a straight stitch center needle position for this. <laughs> I got myself looking through a hole in, in a light that does not have a magnifying glass. Looking for my tweezers. There they are. I have too many pressers in my presser cubby. If you don't, if you haven't made the presser cubby yet, it is another one in the Fabricly Speaking Live. And it basically lets you store little things in front of your sewing machine so that they're handy and they don't roll off the table. There's my bobbin thread, which is 80 weight, so it's 20% thicker than I says using a foot is not my favorite thing to do here. So I sew a little bit. And you can bring that bobbin thread down through and cut it off so you don't have any knots. No one's going to see it by the time I'm done. Yeah, I highly recommend two, two elbow pads now. So I'm going to pretend it's a flower, kind of make it into one. Because this fabric is pretty forgiving. Come into here so this will be the center of the flower. And my brain is going, why are you using this foot? You don't need it. <laughs> Here I have no batting at all, just two layers. It's kind of interesting for you to see how, how powerful this is, how you can sew where there's nothing. Come back in. It's definitely better when there's batting. Back to the center. Now I'm going to go ahead and come up and make the impression of the little stems that go through the petals. It's a lot harder to watch with the foot on, isn't it? You can't see because that foot's in the way. So I'm kind of guessing. And if you try to look around the foot and you can't see around the foot so you do this to look around the foot well you completely throw up throw up throw off your perspective with relation to where the needle is on the fabric so if you hold up a pen or your finger in front of you and then focus on something past the pen or your finger and then hold your hand steady and then move your body. You'll see that whatever you focus on behind will move. But it didn't move, did it? The only thing that actually moves is your head. And so this is another reason it's so much better to not use a presser, not use the free motion foot if you can get it off the machine, which I'm going to do now. Because now we never have to move our head. And that keeps you with the proper perspective with relation to the needle. So you don't all of a sudden end up with a big stitch off to one side. If you've ever done free motion quilting and you quilted really well and then all of a sudden had a big stitch, that's the reason you moved your head and you thought you moved your quilt. So you move your quilt and then when you come back up, you find out your stitch was not where you thought it was. So go ahead and remove the foot and this is attached with a screwdriver because you should always apply your free motion foot with a screwdriver to prevent it from loosening from the needle bar hitting the spring system on the foot where normally finger tight is adequate for feet 
And now, ah, no foot. So much. I have freedom. <laughs> Hello, Ellen. I hope the tornadoes missed you. I didn't expect you to say that you were waiting on tornadoes. <laughs> okay, so I'm like, now I can really rock and roll here. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. I'm going to push the machine a little bit back further back from me because I was having to hyperextend my hand, having the machine further back so that you can rest your body on the table is better. And when I'm quilting, I'm not looking at the needle. I'm looking ahead of where I'm going. Just like when you walk, you don't look where you're going. I mean, you do look where you're going. You don't look where you're at. <laughs> you better be looking where you're going, you guys. So I can go really fast or I can go really slow and you can as well. You do not have to go as fast as the machine can go. This is what is called thread play. You're just playing around. You don't have anyone telling you that you have to do anything in any particular way. So now I've created what appears to be a flower and I can also now go, all right, let's do something else. Let's, let's do some, let's just follow all. You could just go ahead and follow all of the designs that are on the quilt. which is a great learning experience for free motion. You're tracing when you do quilting. You're not filling in, you're outlining what your design is that you're wanting to quilt. So this is a great fabric and if you wanna pick it up, it is a Joann's fabric. Let's see if I got the name on the selvage. It's a keepsake calico quilt fabric, and it was recent. I, I didn't, I just purchased this in the spring. Isn't that lovely? <sighs> I love all those colors. <laughs> yes, this is the baby lock. No foot. If you guys miss that, isn't it refreshing to know you don't need a foot? Creative feet lady says you don't need a foot. What is she called creative feet for? <laughs> You're going to find out very soon and know that the Octi hoops are in essence a foot. This is a giant foot. This one does what the foot does. It holds the fabric down for you. And the octagon shape makes it so you can lock them together. And then the quilts captured in there because of the math of an octagon. Each of the frames has the same angle in the corner, so they fit together. You obviously cannot fit every corner together at the same time because this one is smaller than this one. But that behavior make, is why there's no chance of you ever causing a pucker on the back side of your quilt because you're not pushing down against the sewing machine's resistance. All right, so now I'm gonna just kinda do some doodles some stippling we'll do some stippling stippling is never going over an area you've already been and remember we're gonna we're gonna do some creative trim sewing and using some decorative stitches on the machine to do that so you don't need to quilt the whole thing but you could just randomly have quilt designs this is a great way to learn. So now I'm going to do a flower. Simply doing petals. And there I have a little flower. Now I can come down here and do another flower. Now I'll do a different kind, a center. And now... So this is basically just picture you have a piece of paper and you're drawing on a piece of paper. So you could, if you want, do some hearts. You could echo quilt around that heart. And again.
the freedom of movement of not having a f presser foot is something else. And making this not be the most important aspect of the project, we're going to put all this other stuff on there. Here's another design that I, I'm going to go all the way down and then I'll switch to the feet. Deciding before you begin how large you want your... I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, how long you want your stitches to be. Your brain will help you continue to stitch the stitches the same length. As you watch here, you'll see I'm going to let go. So both my hands are not on there. And now what happens to the quilt is nothing. So it doesn't move. It is my movement, my holding of this little handle here that makes this move up and down. So I could do, for some of you that might want to see me do a little feather, I'm very grateful to know that you're okay. I honestly, I had no idea there were tornadoes coming. So I, did it miss everybody or did it actually touch, touch ground? So as I move, I'm scooting the bottom frame with my finger over here, I just scoot it over. And then I scoot the top one over to meet it. And that's how you progress across the top of the quilt. I dropped my little, so I started over here and I'm all the way over here now. And I didn't have to dis, I didn't have to take anything out, tie any knots or anything. I'm just continuing down the, the length of the fabric. I'll do a little bit while you're seeing this camera angle so that you can see how relaxing it is. My body is in a relaxed state and in fact I really would be even further away and move this out of my way <laughs> this is how comfy I usually am when I'm quilting and you're not watching I lay down on the table this is this is how I can quilt without that close-up camera and I'm now everything in me is celebrating how much easier it is to have everything further away so that I am completely relaxed. Everything is loose and much easier. And when you're not using these upper body muscles, your shoulder blades, you don't get that tightening between the shoulder blades. So you won't end up having muscle pain that you have to deal with later. In the middle of Tennessee, I drove through Tennessee. Ooh, that's funny sound. Phew. There we go. I'm almost to the bottom of the quilt or lower level, lower side, whatever. So a heart. And then there's really nothing that you can't do with this. You can do paisleys. If you know how to draw it, you can draw it on your quilt. So we'll do a little stem of the feather. And then you come back down over that same line, which would be extremely difficult without the octahoops. It is hard to go back over your line. Have any of you done that without my octahoops? Tried to maintain going down a line and back over it and then come up and make a teardrop and then come up and make a teardrop and if you say teardrop each time you'll have a teardrop shape um teardrop teardrop <laughs> and honestly i'm not just doing this to be cute teardrop i kind of want this to look good so teardrop is important to say 
You can place a little circle in there and change because you can do whatever you want. You can make something really groovy if you want. So let's see if we did a little echo quilting around that feather. And everything moves real easily. I'm not having to push down. There's not a lot of muscles used to hold the frames together easy either. Which is a good thing because right now my left thumb has a trigger finger behavior going on. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. My right shoulder, elbow pillow moved. So you can also do pebble sewing. And I'm almost to the end and then I'll do some couching. Which I know some of you have been waiting for me to do more of that. If you're new to my YouTube channel or Facebook, know that we go live every Thursday. This is Fabrically Speaking Live. And you're welcome to ask questions and impact the show because this is your show. As I come up to the end, I do what's called a scissor hold on the fabric. Get it between my fingers and I do that on both sides. And that allows me see how my pinky comes in and it just kind of tucks it and just holds it a little bit firm. I can move the handle to a closer hole and we can actually quilt my left elbow pillow slipped. And we can dance. Oh, look at that. I forgot to lo lower those feed dogs. <laughs> Would you guys like me to lower the feed dogs? So you can see how you can go off and come back on again. It's a very powerful product, you guys. Try that without my hoops. But close your eyes because you're going to be breaking needles if you do that without them. <laughs> All right, I, I, I love free motion. So I tend to not want to stop when I start. One more flower. Okay, we're going to switch now to, I'll run this across the screen so you can see it better. Yeah, you said that, Robin, that you embroider with your software. This is, this is how you can do it without it. You can enhance the embroidery you do with your software using the Octi Hoops also, should you want to. Now this thread was really thin, so I'm gonna to switch to a thicker thread. And I think this will complement it nicely. So windy. You gotta stop saying you can't draw a straight line. What we say out loud to ourselves matters. So learning how to draw a straight line and honestly a straight line, drawing a straight line, well that is challenging for everyone to do by the way. Does that help? That's why there are rulers to help people draw straight lines. So know that it is a common thing to feel challenged to draw straight lines and and a lot of times we're, we're moving our arm when drawing. And, and when you're moving your arm and drawing, well, then you're wobbly because you're not fixed to the earth. The table is fixed to the earth. So if you could get your hands down on the table and keep your hand down and draw with just your fingers, you'll be able to draw a straighter line than you could before. Another reason it's difficult to draw straight lines is because you're usually using an instrument that you have to squeeze and push down on against a hard table and that 
Well, that resistance of you pushing and squeezing, it makes it hard for everybody to draw a straight line. The softer you can hold the instrument in your hand, the better. And since the octahoops have absolutely no downward pressure, you can flow and I actually draw better on a quilt than I do on a piece of paper. And I'm not just saying that, it definitely is easier to draw a line with the quilt. With the, Once you stop thinking about how fast you're pushing the pedal and how fast you're moving your hand, once you stop trying to learn and you just start doing, things get a lot easier. I was thinking this ball of yarn looks like it goes really good with that but it's a little you know it's not your fancy yarn but boy does that doesn't that seem like it would go nicely with that I can use that or I could use this I'm gonna let you guys help me pick the first one and remember it's gonna have this thread over it I have a feeling I know what you're gonna say because one has purple in it and the other doesn't. See, the nice thing about the creative feed is there's no limit to the types of trims that you can use. This is a rat tail cording in a 16th inch size. And this is the rat tail cording in the two millimeter or two and a half millimeter size so you can see the difference between them but the pearls and piping foot will do both of those i'm gonna pull out that foot I'm gonna pull, the pearls and piping foot is the foot featured in stupendous stitching by carol ann Waugh. and this book is available at creativefeet.com as well now she got addicted to this foot. She owns all three of the creative feet, but she's she kind of got stuck on the pearls and piping because she just had so much fun with it. A lot of the educators felt the same way. They love the pearls and piping foot. I'm like, but the others do a better job. You could sew yarn with the pearls and piping foot, but you're going to have the risk of going over it. And I'm just trying to find where my foot is. I switched sewing machines. There it is. So here's my pearls and piping foot. And you can see that the tunnel on the foot does ride beautifully over yarn and over rat tail cording. And over pearls. And it will also ride over really big pearls too. So it's, it's a very versatile foot all by itself. However, if you drive a car over something that squishes, oh gosh, that's, a, that's not a good analogy. <laughs> now I'm picturing all kinds of things. Hi, Judy. So if, if I were to accidentally turn a sharp distance, well, now the foot can ride up and over the yarn. If I try to ride over the rat tail cording, well, the rat tail cording can't escape the tunnel. So the best option for yarn is not pearls and piping, but rather the sequins and ribbon foot because it surrounds the trim. Now that is a lot bigger than that yarn, so it would sway or move underneath the needle which is where the accessory guides come into play. Additional guides for this foot. And there's the 3 8. So these are the different size openings that you have to sew all the different varieties of trims like you see right here. So all these different kinds of trims can be sewn in just the sequins and ribbon foot, not, not the pearls and piping foot. Pearls and piping is for your round, round shape trims that don't squish flat if you push your fingers on them. I hope that makes sense as now we need to think about how we build our 
fiber art. We want to make sure that we do the soft stuff before we do the hard stuff. So the next level will be sequins and ribbon foot and then I'll work on the pearls and piping foot. To change to the smaller guide because that is the one that I want to use. Are you talking about this yarn, Ellen? You have this one? So I can do both, you guys. I can do both at the same time, by the way. Wouldn't that save time? And I really like this one because I'm a teal girl. <laughs> I could do all three at the same time also. So you can mix it up. It's really quite something. I'll show you how. Now, how do you get the guide from off this foot and, and that guide on. You just turn the nut until the guide falls off. And then if you were to drop this before you take the nut out of the guide, see how it stays in there? I did that so you didn't have to run around all over the place chasing after this little nut that will behave like a wheel on the ground and roll away <laughs> and then you can take it through the next guide and insert it as you push against the foot and you push the nut towards the screw and turn it will start to engage and it's wobbly until you get this to line up with that post so then we just turn, keep turning it. And now to get that into the opening is the tricky part, right? Should I do one at a time? I'll do one at a time and then I'll combine. I don't know if you guys, if I caught your vote, but I'm going to show you something that's going to change all your minds. <laughs> I know, this is luscious, isn't it? It's like, it's got all these different colors running in it. And it's very bulky. Now, pearls and piping foot could sew this, but like I said, if you can smush it, and make it flat, you, you're going to have the risk of not catching it all the time. Now, if I was going to use this, I may as well start with this one. You guys want it, right? Ooh, <laughs> Brenda. Ooh, yes. Okay. The purple, here's the thing, this yarn changes so many colors that it'll please all of our color. All of us will like at one of the colors that pops out as we go. And when you work with yarns that are really thick like this, you can sew for a little while and then pull out some. And then continue sewing. And then you can tie it, you know, wrap it up and tie it in a knot and have this be this bigger knot that sticks out from the surface of your fabric. Like I did here. So you can see that big knobby center of the flower and that's how I did it. The yarn is stitched in there and then I pulled it out and then afterward you tie it up and it looks like it's interesting, isn't it? It's fun. I love this one too, but this I don't think complements this. Now of all the openings that we have to choose from. Hi, Tinkerbell. What could I got? Oh, you already found your bed. She made it a mess. So much for that. You look at it and you go, okay, even right here, this is the thickest part of it. So this is the same skein of yarn and it's gonna vary in size from all the way to this 
you see the width of this? So it's going to go all the way from that and then down to this size. So what do you think? Which opening should I use? Should I use the quarter inch guide that we took off? Or should I use one of the smaller openings in this guide or in this on that guide? I love that you're learning something new today, Ellen. I hope you're all enjoying it. So here is how I like to envision which guide to use. I think if this is myself standing in front of the mirror, I may look that size, but I'm truly the size I am if I squish and roll it between my fingers. And this actually compresses down to, you can also twist it to see how small it is to help you to see that it should go through that second guide. How the heck do we get it in there though? It's so much thicker. So if you were to try to put it into that opening, well, you're gonna be spending a lot of time having it shred up on you unless you take a piece of thread and you just lay the yarn over. <laughs> Everything sticks to itself. There we go. And then you bring these two threads together. Now we have the yarn, because of its nappiness, gets stuck in the thread. And we can cut this thread short. Ugh. My thread cutter doesn't work very well on this machine, I forgot. And then insert the threads through that small opening. Whoopsie. Ah, my first whoopsie of the day, you guys. Who's keeping track? Yes, we could. I was thinking about doing some silk ribbon techniques on some of the, some project coming up. Using a different technique altogether using my sequins and ribbon foot. Come on, go in there. And then as you pull the threads, now you got two thicknesses. It doesn't seem like two thicknesses could fit through there, but it does because it compresses. And then you want to think, okay, I'm going to use a decorative stitch. So I want a thread that's going to show over that because decorative stitches are fun. It's finally a use for those decorative stitches. Have any of you had, have any of you never used a decorative stitch? If you have never used a decorative stitch for anything yet, tell me in the chat. It'll help everybody feel better if you're part of the group. So why do I want to use this smaller hole to guide the ribbon? because the ribbon gets, will smush, it'll compress, and then it will travel within the channel. It'll move left and right. Think of it like this. You're driving a car and you're driving a passenger. The yarn is your passenger. This passenger is blind and deaf. And I have experience driving a blind and deaf person around because the, seamstress that I designed the satin edge foot was born blind and deaf. So I picked her up from her house and brought her to my shop and then trained her on her sewing machine and then drove her back. And when we drove, I would tap her leg once for turning left and twice for turning right so that she could know which direction her body was going to sway as the car turned because it was a more calming, restful drive for her that way. This yarn has no idea. It can't see. It can't hear. You can't go, hey, I'm going to turn left. So if the yarn is significantly smaller than the opening and you make a sharp turn to the left, it's going to move all the way over to the right and your zigzag stitch will miss the yarn entirely. And you'll be frustrated because it's frustrating when that happens. Now the unique shape of the bottom of the sequins and ribbon foot also makes it not stick to the fabric. So you can spin around and create flower designs with it and maybe I'll do that. You haven't used decorative stitches? 
Some of you have. Oh, that's good. I like that. So you'll like the stupendous stitching book because that's what she uses in the stupendous stitching book. Oh, I just saw my quilt highlights thread. <laughs> That'll go nice on here too. I haven't used the quilt highlights in purple yet. Maybe I should bring a spool in here. Do any of you have the quilt highlights? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you probably don't. It's actually a ribbon. And of course I have the teal out because I like teal. <laughs> Quilt highlights is a ribbon. Gotta get that microphone out of the way. And this would go through the smallest hole. I can use that in conjunction with this at the same time. But I'm gonna show you alone first and then we'll play around with some other options. I'm so excited about my fingernails. These are my own nails now, you guys. Look, they're almost they're almost all grown out like fake na fake nails, but they're mine. Thank you, God. Okay, so I've got the quilting and I'm going to go to the side of the quilting and start on the end and work my way down. I have no idea what I'm going to do and eh, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's fun. That's all that matters. When you work with this type of technique, one of the things you want to do is release the amount of push that the foot has on the fabric. So right now it's set for the full pressure. I got too much stuff to the side of me. If you have a sewing machine, that is vintage or older, not computerized. Your pressure foot pressure may look similar to this little round tension for bobbin winding on this machine and be closer to the needle area or to the pressure foot bar area. It, and if you have that, it has like an outer ring and a little post inside and a hole down. And a lot of people oil in that hole thinking it oils something. So you just push the outside uh, the outside ring and the post will pop up. And basically what you're doing is releasing the amount of push of a spring that's inside of the machine that's pushing down against the fabric to make it so that the feed dogs have, have something to engage the, the bottom of the foot and the feed dogs grab and the fabric is trapped in there. And that's what makes your fabric advance on the machine. So I'm going to pull out a length of this yarn so that I don't find out I didn't pull out enough by having it jerk away from me and mess up my stitching. And I didn't pull from the inside. <laughs> I drive knitters crazy when they watch me use the yarn wrong. Mostly I just don't have the patience to find the one inside. All right. Too many trims. I got to move my little cubby over. There we go. And on my machine to release the pressure foot, the pressure on the presser foot, oh, that's a tongue twister. So the presser foot, because it presses, that's why it's called a presser foot. And it, I had, and it uses, pre the sewing machine uses its pressure against the presser foot and the feed dogs and that is what makes your fabric feed either really strong in the case of leather and or it, when you're working with just your regular cottons and, and woven fabrics, you can use your full pressure. But if and it's mostly going to make sure the fabric feeds more straight. If you have the, the pressure really loose, it's it, it then gives you freedom of movement. And that's what we want in this case. But if you're wanting to sew quarter inch seam allowances all day long, you want your pressure to be heavy so that it helps you not slip the fabric with your hands. Think of light pressure as you're behind a boat in the lake and you're holding on to your, your string and you're able to move in and out of the wake. And that is the desired setting for the machine for K 
couching and that is what we're doing here no matter what trim I use I am doing the term couching couching if you look it up in a dictionary is the act of sewing something down onto fabric so all of this is couching and uh, so when Carol Ann Wall calls the pearls and piping foot a couching foot it is accurate however the sequins and ribbon foot is and always has been the creative feats top couching foot and now I'm going to think about what kind of stitch I want to use for this but I didn't lower the pressure yet after the pressure is is released I can pull up and raise the foot we'll talk about fingernails you can call me and talk about my fingernails but actually I just started getting I guess I had a vitamin issue and and now it's gone and so my nails all of a sudden wouldn't hold a fake nail just they just kept popping off so I had no choice I had to I had to release that so you can give me a call you know my number so now that I have my pressure really light I'm gonna go ahead and explain a little bit why this is so much better than any other copy of my foot as I'm the original inventor of this foot so as we work with it you can use a straight stitch and just sew through it if the yarn is not lined up with your needle you can move your needle over okay so right now I've stitched a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and sew with just a straight stitch this is how you can quilt with yarn by the way if you wanted to quilt on a quilt you would use a straight stitch and sew right through the yarn but this is kind of off to one side so I'm going to turn the nut which moves the yarn to the needle and now my needle is centered on the yarn and I would want to use a longer stitch length for this this is a really thick yarn there we go and why I'm saying you can use this for quilting is on the back with a straight stitch you don't see anything but a straight stitch so you can swirl around you could draw ahead of time a flower and then duplicate that or you can go ahead now and, and I want to show you more of your stitches switch to I'm gonna go ahead and use a blanket stitch because it's but not a blanket stitch really I'm gonna use the shell tuck stitch which most machines have the difference between a blanket stitch and a shell tuck stitch is on a blanket stitch the sewing machine goes forward back forward over back up back dun, dun, dun. a lot of stitches a lot of forward and reverse movement which kind of needs the fabric and causes it to stretch out of shape a shell tuck stitch which was one of the first stitches created for making a lingerie edge look like that and what that stitch does is this it moves forward goes over comes back comes down so that's all it does so no backward movement which means you won't have as much stretch of the fabric but you're going to get a similar look to a blanket stitch not as much thread so if you want more thread to show use a long a thicker thread and right now I have a 40 weight thread on the machine and now I need to line up the foot to the decorative stitch choosing the width of the stitch is really up to you I'm gonna make it a little bit wider go all the way to five because this is gonna actually max out much bigger right it's gonna get fatter than a five millimeter when it gets to the thick areas I wish I knew what you guys were laughing about and now we have this pretty stitch showing up see how nice that is and you can steer you can go ahead and you could lower your needle when you go to make a, a major turn which you don't really have to do on you don't have to lower the needle I'll, I'll do a little turn for you so I'm going to do a more geometric shape so you just lift the foot and turn the fabric and then lower the foot and the needle because the yarn is trapped in the in the tube the, the needle stays right there so you don't have to lower your needle let 
You see that? And now I'm going to switch to a fun stitch. Let's do, actually, I could add another, no. Let's see. You don't want to use a stitch that covers too much on a yarn this thick because, well, it's thick yarn. This is a really fun stitch. Let's see what it looks like. I'm going to lengthen its length really long because I don't want to cover up all that yarn. And if you have a baby lock, it's 2 16. It doesn't really have a name other than decorative stitch. And lift and turn. Kind of maintaining a, a zigzaggy, give it a little consistency. And you can use fusible batting, which will stop any puckering. This is one time it's fine to use fusible. Kind of looks cool. And let's see, what else do we got? We've got so many stitches. I don't know how many stitches this machine has, but it's excessive. Just not all stitches look good. This is actually a decorative stippling stitch. Well, this will be fun. But I'm going to length it really long because it's got all that thickness to go over. You guys able to see that a well? Let me change the angle a little bit so you can see it coming out. It's kind of a fun stitch. And it really doesn't show up that much. Nothing compared to this one over here. I think you're all funny. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this and it cuts just the thread. My, my yarn is still attached. But what I wanted to do was play around with maybe showing you more than one yarn at a time. Remember to, when you cut, where's my thread scissors? If you're going to use your thread nips for cutting yarn, don't cut the yarn with the tip. Cut the yarn down in the throat of the yarn and take it out so that you can bring it in and tie it off and secure it. And you can see the different appearances you got. You know, on the back side with a decorative stitch, well, you got all that decorative stitch showing. But if this is going to be a wall hanging, it doesn't matter. And you, if you want to do this type of stitch and you don't want it to show on the back, then don't put the back on until after you're done stitching across the top. And this one with a straight stitch just gives you that yarn look. Isn't that pretty? And on the back, as I said before, it just looks like a straight stitch. So this would be the most ideal if you're going to have a quilt that's going to be on a bed and you're going to sew through it with the back fabric. Hue, hue. <laughs> you can, however, use invisible thread in the bobbin and then you won't see the stitching on the back side. I'm going to pull that yarn out and do... couple at the same time because that's fun why not show you more that you can do yeah those are kind of too close to each other let's see do we like this one or did did you guys not like that one was it this one you liked where's the one that I'm supposed to pull If Amy were here, she'd find the end of my yarn for me. I can't find it. So I'm pulling from the wrong end. <laughs> it's frustrating. I usually will unwind and, and then turn it into a ball like this. And then I don't have to worry about it. So let's see, how long have I got? Not long enough. 
Does that go with this? Tinkerbell getting hungry. You want help getting down, baby? I'm gonna help you get down. Oh, there you go. Is that better? Yeah. She could use an elevator now. The stairs aren't enough. She's starting to have a real hard time seeing. It's so sad. If only dogs would never die, right? And we could have them forever. Learn, find someone online and learn from them how to find the end of the yarn. <laughs> they got some really cool ways of doing it, I'm sure. I've already pulled this one out, so this one's going in. And then I'm going to couple it with the other one. And then I'm going to do some pearls and piping. And I'm going to show you how you can bind the edge of this quilt with the pearls and piping foot. How do you guys feel when you get woke up unexpectedly? Last night at 1.30 in the morning, my neighbor had a tow truck trying to lift his truck onto a tow truck at 1.30 in the morning and I have the windows open trying to save on electricity. I was like, what is that sound I'm hearing? It was like <laughs> And then after all his effort, they were not able to do it last night. <laughs> they were out there this morning with another truck because apparently they failed to do it. These are the mysteries that I, I'm curious to know why. But I wasn't going across the street in my jammies last night. And the night before, I was, or at, it was may as well have been night at four o'clock in the morning. We had uh, our fighter jets from our local Air Force base went right over my house, and my heart was pounding. I need a good night's sleep with no disruption tonight. Just wake up. So I got my thick yarn hanging on the thread as I did before. Whoops. And now I take the thicker yarn through the larger hole. You can also applique with this, you guys. You can applique with yarn. It had a little trouble, but it was... So maybe this isn't a good one to use. We'll find out. So how do we determine which size guide for the yarn? How do we, how do we write it in there? How do we, how do we determine which opening to put the trim through? Where'd my thread go? I just had it. Oh, there it is. And yeah, you can use the dental floss thingies. You can use any type of threader that you have, but I find thread to work the best. And usually we got pieces of thread we've thrown off. This is the sequins and ribbon foot, Doreen. Welcome to the chat. And this is one of the creative feet feats. The link for it is in the description of the video. When this video ends, you are actually part of the live. So after the live is over, you can look at the description or you can jump out of the live chat and go in there and click and open it. This is the sequins and ribbon foot with the eighth inch accessory guide. Now I'm looking for my scissors. There we go. I forgot what I was looking for. So this is just a piece of thread and one side of it was shredded. And now this is the quilt highlights that you can find at Creative Feet. We have it in a variety of different colors. And it is a ribbon that behaves different ways. So you sew it one way, it looks one way. You sew it another way, it looks entirely different. It's super fun. 
and this goes right into that opening. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, my this is my trigger thumb holding the foot and it just kind of snapped and got stuck. I can't wait till I'm healed completely. It doesn't hurt as like it did before. Then you just pull and watch how this just goes right in there. And now in this, they do not, they go nicely together, don't they? I think they're pretty. All the lights in my off, my studio are flickering. Why is that happening? Or is it just one? I think one of my lights is going. Time for a new light. It's probably getting too hot. My lights are having a party. It's a disco in here. <laughs> it stopped. That was weird. This is strobe. So if you don't want any stitching to show from your stitch pattern, you can use invisible thread on the needle and you can also use it in the bobbin. The invisible thread to use is nylon, not polyester, because the polyester is scratchy and it doesn't form a stitch with itself very well. So now I have two yarns in the opening at the same time. And I'm going to use the stitch they call couching stitch. Whew hot in here. Maybe I should turn my air conditioner on for a little bit just to cool the room down a little so my light doesn't explode. I'm going to draw a picture of this couching stitch so you know what it looks like. My remote control battery for my air conditioner stopped working so I have to get up to turn it on. So this is what the stitch looks like. It goes like this, then it comes over, then it comes over here, then comes back, then it does a stitch, then it goes up, comes back, and it just keeps alternating like that. And what that's doing is it's, it's going to make it so one yarn can be held on that side and the other yarn can be held on that side. So that is couching. And what we're doing is couching. Couching is the act of sewing something down on fabric. And you can use yarns, ribbons, sequins, all kinds of different trims. You're not stuck with just yarn. This foot is designed to do couching. It's the original couching foot. I invented this when sequins came out on a string. I was 20 years old when I invented the pearls and piping foot. I invented one each year. <laughs> So the pearls and piping foot will be the next one I'm going to show. And that one I invented when I was 20. Satin edge when I was 19. And six sequins ribbon foot I designed when I was 20. Or 21, sorry. Now here's my couching stitch. And I'm going to take it all the way to the widest width for this machine. I probably don't need it. No, yeah, I don't need it all that way. I'm going to go to six. And I'm going to lengthen the length because this is a bulky yarn. So the longer stitch length helps it get over these bumps. And now I can just swirl my way down, catching both trims. And my hands don't have to touch the yarns at all. That's the most important feature of our feet is that your hands are off the trim. If I were using the pearls and piping foot with the yarn, I would have to hold the yarn. Because if I turned a corner with yarn with the pearls and piping foot, where did I put it? I'm not following my normal habits. Well, the pearls and piping foot would not be able to hold that under. I'm gonna find it in a minute. So this is my posture or how I'm holding the fabric. Instead of going like this, which causes your fabrics to stretch out, I support it up in the air. And if I didn't have all this clutter everywhere, elbow down on your elbow pillow or the bolster pillow that is in my school, the pattern for it. And the video on how to use the bolster pillow is in 
the Fabrically Speaking live playlist in my YouTube channel. So it's more of a lifting and assisting rather than a controlling, forcing posture. Elbows up cause pressure and tension and tightening across the tops of your arms and, and in between your shoulder blades. Elbows down and resting and supporting and cradling or lifting is very, very relaxing and easy. Go ahead and bring it closer so you can see it in action. Both of those trims all appearing to twist with one another in front of the foot. You know, ugh, there's so much chaos there. Ugh, it's terrible. And then when you're done, it just takes control of it right there in front of the needle. And this is why this foot is so ideal for your couching with your flexible, softer trims. Two completely different types of trims. One thinner than the other, one thicker, and see how it just lays perfectly flat. And we're building our quilt, our fiber art quilt as we, as we go. Fusible batting is less likely to pucker. Okay, what, what's next? Do you, I'm going to do one row. I'm going to play around with this a little bit to show you the difference in how it looks here to what it's going to look like as I stitch it with a different stitch. It is easier, by the way, to insert your trims when you take the foot off and have it in your hand. I love my bolster pillows. I want to make a bolster pillow kind of thingy for to go across the front of the keyboard of my computer. I already have a quilt that I designed to hang over. So you see how I have a piece of thread and just drape the ribbon right there and then just take it right into the opening. And this is the eighth inch accessory guide and that's the eighth inch slot and it just takes it through. But it also can feed through the round hole and then we just attach. This foot attaches to all sewing machines by the way. I didn't show you how today let me show you comes as a it, it comes with instructions in a package similar to this one hi tinkerbell you should see her position right now it's so cute each of our key our feet come with instructions with illustrations and step by step how to set up the sewing machine and this is the accessory guide instruction booklet it has its own sequin and ribbon has its own and these guides are designed to go on the sequin ribbon foot. So you, if you buy these all by themselves, you won't have the foot. You'll just have the guide. That's why they'll be significantly lower price. Bringing these two together makes it so you can do all the different sizes of trims, all the different widths of trims with every sewing machine ever made with a zigzag stitch. So why they fit is because I designed them to, to work on all machines. Our feet have a larger opening than any other sewing machine company's foot, which makes it so that you can't, you don't have to risk hitting it with your needle. And then we give you adapters, but first you try to snap it on to your machine's snap-on adapter, like you've seen me do here. This is a sewing machine's version of the snap-on adapter. And if it fits and there, it, it isn't too wide or then you're fine. But if it's too narrow, then you'll probably have a Singer machine. And you have the vintage Singer sewing machines can also use our A adapter. They come in the package. So when you buy a foot, you get four adapters and that makes it fit all machines. These are really strong. They're warranted for life. You just twist it on and off. You don't, you don't have to worry about breaking it. You just twist it and it pops right off. But it's super snug and holds that foot really secure. That's the A adapter for Singers. If you have a nine millimeter wide machine, yes, you can use our feet because you take your nine millimeter wide snap-on adapter off the machine and put on our B adapter. Think B is best if you have a nine millimeter, nine millimeter wide snap-on bar. 
and then you're able to use seven millimeter wide feet on your nine millimeter wide machine. Not just ours, but other brands as well. Just watch out. Viking Husqvarna is the only one that can't just go on any machine, but ours slides right onto your Viking Husqvarna snap-on adapter. So the creative feet are the only feet in the world to fit all machines, all makes, all models, industrial and domestic. And I've been fitting all machines since 1989. So this is not a new product. They're warranted for life as well. Even if your dog chews up the foot, we give you a new foot. I used to say no questions asked, but one time a lady sent the feet back and she said they melted on her windowsill. And I was concerned she had a house fire because <laughs> there's no way they're going to melt on a windowsill in your house unless there's fire. And so I called her to see what happened. And she goes, oh, no, you're not going to make me tell you what really happened. And I was like, and if you're in the chat, let me know. And she goes, well, you know, once I got your feet, I just kept sewing and sewing and sewing. And my husband kept saying, if you don't cook for me, I'm going to cook those feet. And he, he did. He took the feet, all three of the creative feet, and put them on the stove and lit the stove. So make sure you eat and take care of yourself and your family. Once you get into these, it's pretty addictive. It's fun, fun. And we've had two two ladies so drive over them with their car because they use our thread dispenser. This is the thread stand that I'm feeding my threads off of. I'm not using the machines feature. It's so much better. And this is why I can sew live and not have thread issues all day long. So when you watch my show, you know you're watching a non-edited live person sitting at a machine doing things that uh, you can is proves that it works really well so here we go enough of that i hope i answered oh if you have a bernina then you'll use one of the bernina adapters we offer at creative feet or if you already have one from bernina this is one of the adapters here and bernina also has their own snap-on adapter by the way that you can get and just snap our feet right on I was at a show and a Bernina dealer, or actually a factory rep, goes, well, we recommend that they use this one and your shortest snap-on adapter because yours holds better than ours. So this is what I'm going to say. You put the snap-on adapter on and see how it wobbles. And that's nothing wrong with that because when the foot is down, it doesn't, it doesn't wobble. So we take this and put our smallest adapter. This is the C adapter. This is the same one you use on the Foff machine and the Viking Husqvarna. And then it snaps on. And if you have a standard low shank sewing machine, an old machine that screws on, or a new machine that screws on, it works. Are you guys asking me a question? Hi, Stephanie. Look at all the Stephanie highs. You're popular. I may as well. I may as well join in. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> Oh, you guys have been chatty. That's good. I hope you've been paying attention. I know some of you make notes. I learned that. So if you're a note taker, you'll probably have a better chance at winning, but make sure that you pay attention. All right, what am I doing? Back to this, and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a shell tuck first. And this is a matching thread, which is not going to show up. Now, you have the ability to swirl around and do different designs. It's up to you. Since I'm doing a long thing, I'm just doing what I did before, which is not really trying to make swirls. And now I'm changing to a straight stitch and you can move your needle over I can't hear myself it's because my phone somebody tried to call me 
Everybody I know knows not to call me on Thursday. <laughs> so now I'm adjusting the guide to center the ribbon or center the needle in the ribbon. It's going to change the ribbon into a completely different look. I went too far. There we go. And I'll show you the difference. Got to get to the pearls and piping foot. We don't want to run too long today. I'm already almost to four o'clock. God, I'm having fun. Oh, I like the shell tuck st stitch better on a blanket stitch project as well. It's also a lot easier for you. You're, you're, you don't feel like a cat trying to chase a, a ball. So see how wide, how much wider that looks? Then the tighter width that it has there. So you can see it's this is it with a shell tuck stitch on it. So it's real narrow. And then I'll fold this up to show you what it looks like with a straight stitch sewing down the middle. So completely different looks. <laughs> this is two layers. Of, it's really thick. So here we go. Can you see that? I'll take pictures as I always do and post them in the in my school and the link to my school. It's a free school. Is in the description of the video after I'm done and also in the chat at the top. If you scroll all the way up, you should be able to find it. So we've done, I've done some free motion and then we did a single yarn showing you straight stitch versus shell tuck versus the stitch that I can't remember what it's called. I think it just said decorative stitch and then this is the couching. Oh no, that's another decorative stitch. This is the couching stitch used to join two different look at how pretty that looks with them sitting side by side and done all at once instead of separately now i'm going to change to the pearls and piping foot so i can find it <laughs> where did i put it this is my little normally i keep my feet all in this one it's in here i just saw it there it is this is not like any copy of my foot. I am the inventor of this foot. I invented it the year these came out on a string. Every sewing machine company that has a beating foot is a copycat. And none of them violated my patent. And that means none of them have this foot. They have one that kind of looks like it and kind of acts like it. Oh man, I got my beads all stuck in my yarn. I got a mess. Is there somebody that could clean that up for me? <laughs> Oh, only if Amy were here. There we go. So the pearls and piping foot allows the trim to feed through there and it doesn't allow it to move left and right, which means you don't have to hold your trim with this foot. With all the copycats, they, they do. You know, like having a, they usually put two fingers in front to try to make it look like they're not guiding, but they are. And I would have, I don't have a, I don't have a large bead handy right now, but they do so large and small. Oh, I got something I can show you. If you're new to my channel and you're new to the creative feed, this all may seem a little overwhelming. Feel free to reach out to me. You can ask questions from my contact form at creativefeet.com. I'm very happy to help you. This is a combination of the satin edge foot doing the satin stitch around the fabric first. This is a this is the Christmas uh, drink coaster lesson that I taught last, or I don't know if it was last year. They're all running together. And this is my bride and groom champagne glass. You put the champagne glasses there. It's a great photo op. You can, you can monogram the bride and groom's names instead of bride and groom. So you can see the difference in the size of the bead, but it's just the one foot. One foot for all sizes. Instead of having to have a bunch of feet, when I think one company came out with five feet to try to duplicate what this foot does. And they can't. 
And this foot also gathers automatically, can gather up your fabric. Zoom, zoom. You can do a bunch of uh, little tool tutus for the little girl in your life. I always check to make sure there isn't a broken bead. There's a broken bead. Now I could, I can cut that off and not have to deal with it. Or I can sew to that point and then I bring it forward and then start sewing again. And that is not visible. In the situation that I'm in now and the time I have, I'm going to, I'm going to cut it off because I, I'm trying to keep myself on schedule. I have a meeting after this, so I can't run long. So I'm pulling it out to see if I have enough to go the full length. And I think I got, I think I got a good chance of it. So we started on the quilting first because we work our way forward the lowest thing first the softest thing second, then the thing that can break your needles last. And when I mean break your needles, I mean if if the bead was already placed, then when we did quilting, we could hit our bead because you, you're not going to break your needle sewing the beads on. But if you quilt or try to stitch ribbon or yarn next to a bead, well, that's when there would be a problem. So we're doing it in the correct order. And I'm just going to use a regular zigzag stitch. And you can use invisible thread if you don't want your stitches to show. The width of this bead is two and a half millimeters wide. The width of the stitch needs to be one millimeter wider. That's three and a half millimeters to your two and a half millimeters. And the instructions are in the package, so you don't have to remember anything that I say. Isn't that nice? I'm trying to find my glasses. There they are. Now, Amy needs to move up here and start being my assistant. She's got art. She's busy. Amy is a you're a ceramic artist, right? And she's not just a ceramic artist. She sells her her wares, you guys. I'm I created I'm creating a spot where you guys can post things that you make for sale as well inside of the school. So you can see how I don't know if you can see that. I wish I I wish it was zoom in more. All right, so here we go. The My hands are not touching the pearls. Okay, they're off to the sides. And I'm holding the fabric up again, making sure I'm not leaning against it, stopping the quilt from feeding, and my elbow on my elbow bolster, the bolster pillows. I have another pillow over here. So you're resting your body and when you don't have to push down against the, the fabric, your hands won't get sore. Everything gets stiff when you don't have the creative feet. You're forced to put yourself in an awkward position, trying to hold on to the bead while guiding the fabric. If you've ever sewn with another brand of beading foot and had that realized how much more challenging it is, go ahead and make a comment. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I got just too much. I just had deja vu. Do, 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 do. All right. Have you guys ever had a deja vu experience? So I should have the machine further away and not have all of this in front of me. But since I am limited and you're always, see, I'm, I'm, it may not be obvious to you that I am not centered with my needle, but you should be. So I should be six inches over and the needle is centered with your breastbone. And then you know that you are in line with the needle and you're less likely to sew curvy when you're trying to sew straight. And that's part of the reason people don't sew straight is they're, they're kind of leaning over to and leaning the other way. And it changes your perspective to the needle and makes it appear as if, as if the fabric has shifted when it didn't and that's what makes you move it when you shouldn't and why you end up with not a straight line but a oh, ooh, an oh, ooh, kind of line of stitching. So now you know my posture is sitting like this relaxed not having to touch the pearls at all no risk of hitting the sewing machine needle on them as well. I'm going to switch to the other camera so you can see it up close. 
And now, because the yarn is soft, I can take and I can crisscross, I can take the pearls. Remember, I'm not guiding the pearls at all. It takes it for me. And I can go all the way over all of these yarns. And this is partly why you don't want to use this foot for the yarn because it can cross over yarn so easily. Zoom, zoom. I'm getting sleepy. Actually, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I'm surprised Chase hasn't gotten in here yet. He's usually here at four o'clock on the, on the, whatever you normally say. I got yarn rolls rolling around. Trim days are always messy days. As a little bonus, I'm going to show you something really quick. Uh, this is a fun one. So here's a decorative braid, and I'm going to take the decorative braid and I'm going to sew this onto that braid. This is the difference between buying the creative feet or buying a copycat. Come on. This reminds me of doing a show. Now I'm going to disconnect it from the quilt because oh, it sounds like my machine needs oil. I can hear it squeaking. So I'm disconnecting the quilt from it, and now I just have the trim and the pearls. And I can just let go and walk and walk away from this. I'm creating my own trim. I'll go ahead and show you up close what it looks like. And it's because of this little ridge right here, and it fills in the ridge this little bump fills in the ridge and it centers the beads inside of there and you're able to create your own beaded trim and go for miles and miles and miles zoom 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 i should not use these scissors this when you want your shears where'd i put them the time for the Kai scissors and make sure you don't hit the bead. Should you want to sew this into a seam? If you're into bag making and you want to make this go on a bag. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I can't wait to catch up. <laughs> so then I just go ahead and push and make sure you don't do this near your machine. If you do, make sure there is something covering the zigzag opening so those little pearl sections don't break off and go in there. And you just break the pearls. They're plastic. And you just crunch them until they break off at the string. And this is how you can sew them into a seam without the beads falling off because I know one of you was making Bible covers and had that issue. So now you have that string that can be stitched down and it'll stop the rest of the string from coming off. And I, since it's fiber art, no, I don't really want to put it on there. You can then stitch it right back down again onto something else. There's a piece of fabric. This, this isn't going to go together very well, but hey, you know, it's just to show you. So now we have created our own trim by combining two different trims together without really having to guide it. 
and then you can sew it on. Once again, my hands are not guiding that trim at all. And it really makes quite an impact on whatever it is you're sewing. Isn't that pretty? Okay, let's see, cording. We haven't done cording yet. We'll do some cording. I'm pretty sure you'd like purple. It's more of a grape color. And we can do this more than one way. I'm gonna, it's gonna be loud, get ready. Well, my, my microphone is set to where you don't really hear the sewing machine that much. Yeah, you could do that, Brenda. It's just uh, harder. You have to watch it more. So I'm using a straight stitch and moving my needle over so that it's catching the side. What am I hearing? Sounds like something's not in there right. So I'm catching the side of the cording. This is how we sew it on wedding veils. And you don't end up seeing the stitch. And you could hear it's going through it and then it rolls over. And then you don't see the stitch, but it's secured. And the benefit of that on a quilt is that on the back side it's a straight stitch and you can't really detect it. Since we're having fun here with some stitches, This is like a one of the overcasting stitches. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. We'll try it. Now the stitch is way over, so I'm gonna take the foot off. Since you can't move a zigzag stitch over and then slide this washer over, another feature no other foot has. And now the stitch is lined up with the trim. So this is just your regular old overcast no, this is the overlock stitch. What's the difference between the overlock and an overcasting stitch? An overlock stitch has a st stitch that sews a straight stitch on the side so that you can use it as a, a seam. Now I'm going to change to another decorative stitch. So let's see what I got. This one looks like it might be cool. a little wider than I need it to be. I'm going to take it down to 5.0 from a 6.0. And let's see, you can take and pull something out like that. Because remember, we're creating art. This is a forward and reverse stitch. So once I know that it is going under the foot, then we can lift, pull it under the back side. Come on, go over there. Lift it a little bit more. Make sure both go. There we go. And this would be how I explained before how you tie a knot like in the center of a flower. I prefer a stitch that doesn't go forward and back. Let's see what this one does. Just because it's hard on the fabric. If you have a fusible batting, it's not as big a deal. Back to the stitch I like the most. Oh, I hit the wrong area on my screen. It needs to be calibrated. I gotta turn the machine off and on. Sorry, guys. Back to the couching. Oh, no, I did it again. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so I got to take this puppy in for service. Mm. 
we'll use just a regular old blind hem stitch. And the stitch needs to be... Does it set for double needle or something? It's not letting me move it. I don't like it when it won't let me do what I want. One more try tapping this button. No, I'm not going to bother. Here we go. And I'm almost done with this. I could go on for hours showing you all the different ways that you can stitch with this. But one of the things I did promise you is how to bind at the edge of it. I do have a 208 page workbook and a two hour instructional video showing you all the different techniques we can do with our three feet. Learning three feet is a lot easier than learning 88 different feet doing one thing each. So each of our feet are capable of doing well over 20 techniques each alone. So I'm going to do something here. This isn't going to end up being a, a work of art for me. I want you to see how we handle it when it's the raw edge with the batting on the side. So I'm just chopping it off here. Definitely be better if this was fusible and fused together, but we can substitute fusing with our liquid-based glue, also available at creativefeet.com. And some stores. Where is that glue? Where are you, glue? See if Amy were here. She'd know where I put it. Hi, Tinkerbell. You ready for Mama to quit? I might have to. Sometimes it's okay to use a glue like the Afliquit glue, and sometimes it's better to use our liquid base. This would be one of the times it's better to use the liquid base, but I can't find it. Uh, every video that I have, you, you should be able to find it. But we can use, this is more expensive also than our liquid base. So I try not to use it, and except for the applique process it was designed for. So we're just going to bring these, and you can see that's two layers of batting, bring them together, and then I'm just going to do a little bit for you because I should be ending because I have a meeting. So I can't stay much longer here. You want to make sure you've got that cut so that the fabric is lined up. All right, so this is a really cool thing. There's so many things I can show you. I want to show you all of it. It's still connected. Welcome to the feed. If you're new to my feed, you are here on June 9th, 2022 at 417 Mountain Standard Time, then you are watching me live. If you are not here on that day, you're watching the replay and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't yet so that you don't miss out on any of our live shows where you can participate in the chat and be up for the prize that we do sometimes. I don't always do a giveaway, but we are today. I'm giving away some trims for whoever answers the, this question that I'm thinking up in my head right now first. So get ready to type, you guys. I am trying to think of something that I said that you would have had to have paid attention to. Why, here's the question, ready, drum roll. Why should you use the sequins and ribbon foot instead of the pearls and piping foot to sew yarn down? First person to answer that question correctly gets the prize. The cap is on the glue. 
this time. I just don't know where the bottle is. It's probably under all this fabric on my table. Why do we use the sequins and ribbon foot for yarn instead of the pearls and piping foot? That's the question. <laughs> that's not, that's too general of a step. Ellen, you won again. Because the pearls and piping foot flattens out the yarn. That's correct. And you didn't even come in all the way at the beginning, huh? I should have had a question from the very beginning. <laughs> Some of these people show up every Thursday. <laughs> Secure was my EPRD. Are you having trouble typing, Lorinda? I gave you a forewarning to get ready to type. Should I give you more warning? Is it not fair enough? Sequins and ribbon foot is the best foot for anything that is flat or anything that you can squish flat. If you use the pearls and piping foot or the satin edge foot, for those or any other sewing machines rendition of my couching foot the sequins and ribbon foot you'll struggle but the sequin ribbon foot is just like takes it through and then you just steer your fabric and it goes along for the ride and ellen has something coming to her right now so it's perfect timing did you check if you didn't check your email ellen check your email and then you can complete your order by the way you guys we do have a sale going on today the coupon code is at the top of the chat. I'm not going to say it out loud because once this is not live and the coupon expires, it frustrates people. So be sure to go to the top of the chat. Or if you're a member of the school, I did announce it today. And inside of the school, look, you can go inside of the school and click on discovery to see what's new. And or if you are a member of our, our YouTube, no, our newsletter list from creativefeet.com it's also listed in there and in all of our facebook pages it's at the top of the facebook post for today's live so go ahead and take advantage of that we gave you we're giving you 15 percent off now until sunday at midnight go for it save some money since we're having gas prices going up my coupon value has gone up to Try to offset some of the frustration we're all going through right now. It's a good time to buy a big purchase. If you've been wanting one of wanting, boy, I just dropped my cord. All right, one more thing and then I'm going to go. So under the, I have the pearls and piping foot set halfway on to the batting and this cording, see what color it is. I'm going to slide it in here so that it sits off the edge of the quilt. And then I have it pull out from the top. I'm only going to do a little bit because I got it in the show today. I'm going to go wider than you need to go so that one stitch goes on the quilt and the other stitch goes past. No, I have the wrong stitch on. Back to the zigzag stitch, just your regular old zigzag stitch. Wider. So this is, I'm going all the way to six on the width. You should be able to do it with a five as well, because every sewing machine can do this. You could even do it with a four if you want. Now I'm going to shorten the stitch length. You don't have to go as short as you would normally go for a applique. I'm going to 0 0.8, I believe, is the magic number for this. And what's going to happen... I have the same color thread and the needle in the bobbin. This would be a time to switch out and have 40 weight in the needle and the bobbin. Actually, taking it down to 0 0.6. And Carol shows you in, the, in her book to hold the cording up, but you don't need to. You can let it fall and guide instead. And this allows you to actually create a binding. It actually covers both all layers of the fabric but I actually go a little bit further with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh my gosh, Ellen, you're over $5 a gallon. We may be very soon. We were almost to five the other day. I'm going to go a little bit because I was checking my stitch length now that I know what it is. So we have a nice clean look. Same weight of thread and needle and bobbin. Go with your thicker weight of thread for this so that you don't have to go as short on your stitch length. All right, now I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to show you what I do. So you can just have that and you can see it covers the all layers of the batting and the fabric. So that's a quick fiber art method of binding. You can also now take a straight stitch, left needle position, and if you want, you can do a straight stitch forward and back stitch. It's another use for these because they're really bad for stretch fabric. And then you get that look. Kind of looks like a serger did it. And then you can go again, because remember, the foot does the guiding for you. So you you might not resist doing all of these different sections of stitching. Moving the stitch needle position to the center. It's going to sound loud. Because the needle's going through that cording, which is very dense. Not dense and not being intelligent, but see how cute that is? Isn't that pretty? And you could also finish it with pearls on the edge as well. And for right now, I'm going to not disappoint the person waiting for me. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, especially if you wouldn't mind, after the live is over. Once the live's over, you just jump on over to the video again and hit that like button so so YouTube knows that you enjoyed it. And if you haven't given me some hearts in the Facebook, go ahead and do that. I really appreciate it. It does help. Sharing is also a sign of caring. I would appreciate it if you shared all of the stuff that I offer for you. And um, if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. The school that I have, I think I have a way to show you the school on the what size is the grid last cutting mat for their light board? The grid is set up in quarter inch little segments. Maybe I can quickly show you the top. So it has, it's a little blurry. It's not set to this level, but it has quarter inch marks and centimeters and then half and on both on on all on these sides you'll see it has the actual lines it, it says millimeters on the other side it has inches millimeters and it's abs i love it and then it has the diagonals also built in different angles the radius is there 75 degree angle 60 degree angle so it's written down for you and then of course what's so cool about this is that if you're not familiar with the caterpillar light tablets that we offer definitely 15 percent coupon at creative feet this will be a good time to buy one these are my quilt block sizes that i'm making or using for my quilt that i'm making right now so i don't have to measure my little squares with a ruler, I can just lay my squares right on top of that and know that it is cut the right and then move on to the next piece. It's, it makes uh, quilting easier and appliques easier because you can take designs and place them beneath the board as well and color on fabric through the board. The board that I have on my table right now is the ultra it is sizable the premium and the glow basics are half the size of this currently you can get the ultra board but everything else for the ultra is on back order for a little bit more we automatically will send out the board and then all your accessories come later when they're back in stock and the premium is a plug-in and you can also use it not plugged in 
so that you can take it to the couch and draw, get your applique pieces ready for your project, sitting down watching a movie with your feet up in your recliner for four hours, the battery holds. This Ultra does not have that ability. They don't have the ability to, to, to have a battery run on a board this size or they would have done it because we've asked them many times for that feature. And uh, another product that is a good idea to buy during a sale of this size of coupon is the cutter, the Crafter's Edge die cutting machine where you cut through your fabrics and we have all kinds of dies to make cutting your pieces faster, which is what I used to cut over 1,000 squares for my quilt. I did not rotary cut. I just rolled it through and it chops the pieces. So let me see. I believe at the end when I end the show, it's going to show you the address for the school. It's create.clairowley.com. So until next Thursday, I will uh, look for you in the school. Love you all. Thanks for watching. Bye.